Hi, in this video we are going to review how to use Jitpoint Catch in order to visualize the sound signal and later transform that sound signal in something visually interesting. So let's see that in this uh, object, Jitpoint Catch, usually, well, it can work together with a gene point graph. This is the uh, Jitpoint Catch help file. And here uh, you see that this Jitpoint Catch is connected to Jitpoint Graph. And so this object is going to allow actually to, um, to make the uh, conversion between, um, let's say, uh, the audio signal into the visual domain. Okay, as a, as a sound uh, waveform. Let's turn it on and see a little bit about it. So this is it. So it, this object has different modes to visualize the waveform. So if you go to attributes and you go to um, mode, you can see that you can adjust that to a different modes so you can visualize the information as points, lines, an area, a bipolar area, etc. So just take that into account. And now let's move on to our patch. In this patch it's called MSP uh, Jitter O2 Catch Graph. Okay and Please open it. Let's study a little bit the architecture. This is a play a patch made by Andrew Benson from Cycling74 and I modified it and I commented it in order to explain what is going on. So the explanations are in here. If you want to see them, just open the patch. Um, Okay, so let's start studying how it is it is built. So I I have here my SF play object that is going to read a sound file from the hard disk. Later I have here an amplification in order to via uh, vary the amplitude. Uh, later my jitpoint point catch object that is going to receive the this audio signal and then it is going to output that information as a matrix then jit graph is going to receive that matrix information and it's going to display it as we just saw in the help file and later the information go the information goes to luma luma k object the LumaK object renders all black pixels transparent, so in that way the feedback matrix will still be visible. And we need to do that because uh, we are using later a JITPOINT ROTA and we are creating a feedback again. Uh, so we are creating a feedback between that matrix, the output matrix in JITPOINT graph and the uh, the luma key luma key so we are we are doing a, a feedback in rota here but let's say that before making that uh, uh the loop the the subsequent loop in rota i need to make the, the black pixels transparent so it doesn't saturate and um, so let's see how it looks i just need to open a sound file and later uh, turn on my display object and later turn on my uh, my jitter objects and so that's it uh, just let me Okay. So um, this is the original waveform, the original graphic. See, and I just rotating this, and before 
sending that to Rota, what I am doing is just uh, varying the color in here. And so this is it. It's quite simple, I think. Um, so as an exercise, what I suggest uh, for this case, first you can try to add more processing to the image at the end of the uh, the chain. Uh, so you can, um, for example, here you can, you can get more, or here at the end, you can add more process. You can also vary the uh, modes of visualization in, in, in graph. So you can have, uh, here you can also visualize points and lines, area, etc. But most important, maybe you can also find a better way, a more creative way to change color because this is just random, just a random, sorry, this is uh, the rotation part. These are the colors, so the colors are just generated randomly. Yeah, so it's just a random choice of colors and probably not, well, not really personal. So try to create your own colors to fit that with the graph, with the colors of your preference. And um, so that's it. So remember this process where catch and graph are connecting together. So let's see uh, the next patch where we are going to combine catch with, with a 3D world uh, right in the next tutorial. See you.